海关检查之后，再将您的行李托运到您的最终目的地，请代表当地警察联盟及全球合作伙伴，尤其是来自西雅图的学员。What's up, everyone? In this video, we'll be going back to 2016 when my wife and I took a four-day adventure in Beijing. Now, four days may not seem like a lot of time, but with some planning and taking advantage of some good deals, I was able to put together a pretty solid trip. Before going on a trip to China, there are three things I'd like to point out. Number one is taking care of any passport or visa requirements. And that involves a $140 application fee and actually handing it your application in person to a Chinese embassy. Uh, if you're not living near a Chinese embassy, you'll have to use some sort of visa service. Living here in Seattle, we use the visa service. It took care of pretty much everything for us. Uh, guided us through the process and it costs around $250 per person. Number two, be aware that China has a lot of censorship on the internet. There are a lot of sites that you may use on a regular basis like Facebook, uh, Twitter. You wouldn't be able to watch this video in China. If you were depending on using these sites to communicate, you might want to find an alternative option. Number three, a good amount of merchants will take credit card but a lot of merchants say they prefer cash or just accept cash payments. A few examples of these were uh, in some of the restaurants walking around the neighborhoods, uh, was cash only. Uh, some of the hutong shops that we shopped for souvenirs took cash only. And uh, the most important uh, one are the taxis. You don't want to upset your taxi driver. Uh, they prefer cash. Cash is king to them. One sub tip is always take a taxi. Uh, they're the most reliable, they're the safest. And uh, one time we didn't take a taxi and uh, we paid for it. More on that later. For this trip, we were able to book a five night stay at the Sheraton Grand Beijing Dongcheng Hotel. We used 70,000 Starwood preferred guest points towards the Starwood Nights and Flights program. For you points and miles enthusiasts, the redemption rate ended up being 2.79 cents per point, which is a really good rate for SPG. If you want to find out more about the program, check out the links below. The hotel is pretty centrally located in Beijing. We were able to walk 10 to 12 minutes from a subway a little bit far, but not too bad. Most of the time we took taxis anyway. The rooms were really clean and we had a really good view. Overall, I really liked our stay at the hotel. Our first day in Beijing happened to be on a Sunday, so we thought it'd be a good idea to check out the Temple of Heaven and the surrounding park area. On Sunday morning, this area is very lively. There's a ton of people hanging out, chatting with each other. We came across this outdoor exercise area and it was just jam packed with people uh, doing their own workout routines. After seeing the Temple of Heaven and hanging out at the park for a while, we took a subway to Tiananmen Square. A lot of people come here to see this iconic place in Chinese history. We walked with a herd of people under the gates with the huge Mao Zedong portrait. And once inside, there was just a ton of people waiting to get in line to enter the Palace Museum. We didn't want to wait any longer, so we just got a snack and then headed on to Jingshan Park. Just north of the Forbidden City is Jingshan Park. There is a hike up to the top, which is relatively easy. It's pretty much just a lot of stairs you have to climb. But once you get to the top, the view is worth it. You can look down and see all of the Forbidden City and on a clear day, a lot of Beijing. After a full day of sightseeing, we worked up quite an appetite. 
Our hotel concierge recommended we try the pecking duck at Da Dong restaurant. When we got there, we ordered the duck and a couple of side dishes and they brought out the duck and served it to us table side. It was really juicy. The duck fat was just so delicious and the duck meat was so tender. This was my favorite meal in Beijing, maybe even just the favorite experience that I had in Beijing. So, uh, he decided to link up the uh, separate sections of the high wall. Why is it called se separatory? The next day, we spent the entire day hiking the Great Wall. At the entrance, our tour guide Miko explained a bit of the history of the Great Wall and along the way would go into detail about the different sections we would encounter. We hiked the Jinshan Ling part of the Great Wall. It's advertised as less touristy and not that many people, and that's pretty true. We did not run into a lot of people along the way, and it made for some great photo opportunities. Good hike so far. It's a good movie. The hike lasted uh, about five to six hours. We were very tired at the end. Good thing the tour included a nice meal at the end of the hike. When we woke up from our nap after the hike, we were pretty hungry again. So we checked out a place called Bao Yan Dumplings. They're known for their colorful dumplings. They make them with different kinds of vegetables. That's what gives them their color. Overall, a really great way to end our second day in Beijing. Our third day in Beijing started off at the Olympic Village, which was pretty much a ghost town. There are a lot of structures to see, like the Bird's Nest Stadium and the Water Cube, but other than that, there's not much else to do. I do recommend you try the tasty yogurt treats at the vendors, though. Wangfu Jing Street is a popular shopping area in Beijing. You'll find a lot of modern stores that you can find almost anywhere in the world. We went there for people watching and taking a look at some interesting treats. At night, we were able to catch a show at the Chaoyang Theater. And after the show, we headed to San Litun to enjoy live music and some late night drinks. Our last day in Beijing, we took a cooking class from an organization called The Hutong. We learned how to make hand-pulled noodles in a tomato-based sauce. I was not that successful at pulling the noodles, but hey, at least I tried. With one last night in Beijing, we sought out to explore some shops and restaurants in a nearby hutong. By the time we got there, it was just downpouring, so I couldn't get a lot of footage. We got soaked, but we braved the storm and came across some interesting jewelry shops and small food shops. Overall, Beijing was a great experience. I loved the food, the culture. I still can't get over how delicious that pecking duck was. Hiking the Great Wall was a bucket list item that we got to check off, so that was great. Even though we did a ton of things in China, ate a lot of great food, uh, there were some things that we still missed out on. We were just pretty tired after all the things we did. 
pretty traumatized after almost getting beat up by a tricycle driver. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this helps you plan your trip to Beijing and see you on the next adventure. Thank you.